Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Spark data frames and we're going to go over the basics. So Spark data frames are going to allow you to handle large scale um, data sets, okay? Particularly uh, whenever we're using uh, Spark 3.0, the data sets are an extremely powerful tool at our disposal. It's basically going to be uh, able to use these data sets like we would in tables. So for those of you that are very familiar with R or Python libraries, uh, for, such as uh, Pandas or uh, the Tidyverse, for example, you've already understand the concept of data frames. Um, now Spark is going to basically expand on this data frame concept, okay, and it's going to allow us to uh, transfer these uh, knowledge and skills, okay, uh, by understanding, again, the simple and easy syntax uh, that comes with these data frames. And we're also going to have the ability to use SQL directly inside of the data frame, which is a very powerful option. And we can also use operations to, again, that will automatically be distributed across the RDDs. Now, um, this is, again, it's going to be, there's going to be a little bit more um, peculiar syntax as it were, okay, that we may have to uh, deal with, uh, but that's what we get for being able to utilize all of these uh, functional formats that we have. Um, I will be using um, this in Google Colab, um, and so there's a little bit of a startup work that you need, okay, and so let me scroll back up here so that we can kind of look at this, and this is my preamble that I have here. Now, um, we have to run these three cells before we're able to do this, okay? Um, I'm going to be putting this on my GitHub page, and I will, um, hopefully you guys will be able to get it. Um, it's here. I'll put a link up there in the description, or down here in the description, for you guys to, to grab this file. Um, so we need to actually download uh, Java 8, okay? And this is that's what this uh, line here does, okay? And so if those of you that aren't... Um, I haven't used this type of syntax before or anything this little uh, exclamation point when you run this is basically running shell commands so we use uh, wget to download uh, spark 3.0.1 that's what we're going to be using today and make sure again that this is uh, Hadoop 2.7 uh, then we need to extract the file and then we also want to find PySpark then this uh, cell here we're actually running is uh, taking care of our environmental variable so that uh, Python is going to be able to find Java and it's also going to be able to find Spark. Um, and then here we're going to utilize, this is a little bit of a easy to utilize tool, okay? Uh, that's what we downloaded here. And uh, this is a uh, find Spark and it allows us just to grab um, our Spark instances just a little bit quicker. Uh, than having to uh, futz around with some stuff. So anytime uh, from now on in the series, I'm not going to really show this, okay? But I expect that you guys will have ran uh, this section each time. Um, I may kind of remind you guys to run the preamble. That's what I'm just going to be calling it from now on in this series. Um, and so let's maybe uh, go on and get started with um, Spark data frames. So first off, let's maybe create a Spark data frame. And so uh, from pi spark okay and then we're going to grab uh, dot sql here we're going to import a spark session so we're going to need to create a session all right and then we need to actually initiate the session now this this again if you're on your local computer or something this actually may take some time so we're going to call this spark and we're going to say spark session uh, and we want to use the builder we're going to give it an app name and since this is actually our basics series for uh, uh, pi spark specifically we're going to call this uh, just basics actually we may call this pi spark basics so that um, we're a little bit more clear and then we're going to uh, get or create and this will initialize our uh, our spark session and again it may take a little bit of time um, so, again, when you're doing this, um, this, this is just going to kind of depend, again, if you're using an AWS instance or you're using, um, maybe you're using uh, Databricks or, or Azure or something like that, then this also may be um, uh, what you need to kind of get everything up and running. Now, I have some data up on, on my local machine here, or not local machine, but I'm going to use this uh, user profile.json today and again I will put a link in the description at where you guys can grab that um, and so what 
oh, what we're going to look at here is actually uh, grabbing and importing in some data. So let's just call this uh, DF. And again, we're, we're going to talk more about um, some of this later. So specifically this read um, option. OK, and all of these are options. That's what we call them here. And we're going to use JSON. Again, JSON is a very common data type that we have. So I named this user profile. Uh, JSON. Again, this is probably something very similar to what you would have if you're working on an e-commerce website or, or something else. And let me go on and run this. Whoops. Uh, oops, I forgot the equal sign here. Sorry. Talking and typing apparently is going to be difficult for me. Um, so we're going to uh, start up this, uh, this uh, download here. So this is, again, we're just calling it a, a DF or a data frame. And notice, though, that uh, this has a little bit of more of a, a slow evaluation here, okay? So we have something like uh, df.show is how we're actually going to look at the data. And so let me run this. And it'll take a little bit of time. Again, this is, uh, and if you see here, um, it actually did something a little bit strange with our data, okay? Because I actually was just grabbing um, the data using this uh, uh, JSON. Uh, format here okay it doesn't actually grab everything in a nice clean format okay and we'll we'll talk about how we deal with that um, in in just in just a moment okay part of that has to do with uh, again we didn't create and we didn't uh, fully utilize all of these options so maybe we can go about and maybe make a quick um, a data set that we're able to uh, kind of play with here so let's go, and this is this is actually maybe helpful for some of you guys that have never, um, never created uh, data uh, like this before. Okay, we can actually do uh, something like this: uh, write file. Okay, and so maybe we want to. Let me think of a nice a nice way to look at this, and let me kind of maybe think about some data that we want to create here. Um, hmm. what would be a good type of data set that we want? Um, hmm. okay, so let's do something very simple. So let's do um, age, and then uh, we'll have, no, let's see, we want something a little bit simpler here. So give me just a second and I'll be right back here. Okay. All right. So let's let's change this up just a little bit. All right. So we want and we want to give this a name. So let's call this um, user simple.json. And so we're going to call this um, name and let's call give the name of uh, Bob. And then let's say we want here we want name and we'll give uh, this um, Jim and we'll have an age of 40 okay and then let's give uh, one more and we'll do name uh, of uh, Mary with an age of uh, 24 now if we look here I'm going to do this on purpose. We actually left out some data here, okay, so that we can actually uh, play with uh, uh, what a null value would actually happen to. And if you notice, this actually just wrote out uh, user simple. And so let's go back, and I'm actually going to move this up just a little bit. And then so we'll actually grab and we'll change this up to uh, this user simple JSON. And we'll go back to more complicated data structures here in just a little while, okay? So let's run this. And let's run this now. The show, and now, now we see here that we have this little output. Again, this puts it out um, not in this clean format that maybe you're used to with Jupyter Notebooks or anything else, but this is how it would look if you're using this in a command line instance. Um, so it has this nice boxed format. And notice here that we have this null. Okay, so it did. Whenever we did leave out his age, again, it was smart enough to actually go in and pick out a null value there. Uh, so let's go on and see what else we can actually uh, use with this. 
So we did show, and now another uh, another attribute that we can kind of play with here is the print schema. Now this is amazing, okay, if you guys have had to deal with databases before. And what we actually look at here is it automatically kind of gave us some schema, okay? So for age, it says long. So again, it is assuming that it's going to be some, some sort of long form um, uh, number. And again, nullable is equal to true. Okay, and we can we can change all of these settings, and we'll maybe go through when we're specifying schema here in just a moment, uh, what we can actually do with that. And then it also has name, and it's noticed that name is going to be a string, and that's even just with this small little sample here. But again, always double check if you're grabbing it from another data source or somewhere else. You need to double check. Always double check what your schema looks like, so that maybe, for example, you do expect age to be a number, but maybe there was too many null values in it, or maybe the data isn't very clean, and it may say that it's a string, and you may want to uh, kind of force it to be um, a long value or a numerical value of some sort. We can also grab the columns, so df.columns will give us the column names, and it gives us out as a nice list format. Uh, we can also uh, do uh, df dot describe okay and again so this is and again we can actually see here whoops run for me um, that this describe function is a little bit different here okay um, it doesn't actually run anything but it gives you just a summary string age string name string it doesn't really give us a whole lot of other type of information right now now, uh, some data types are going to be easier to infer than others, okay, just, just to kind of let you guys remind that. And again, specifically if it's in a tabular, tabular format, such as CSVs, or uh, maybe Excel sheets, or just a, a, SQL, a, a proper SQL database itself, again, it may, you may have the ability to do that just a little bit easier. Now let's maybe go through and um, do some specifying of the schema. And I may, uh, just for ease, I may go back and use this small example that we used here instead of the bigger, um, my bigger example. And we'll go back to the bigger example, uh, possibly um, maybe in the next, the next video. So how are we going to specify schema? Um, so first we need, we need a couple uh, lines here. So we want, from pyspark.sql.types import, and we want the, it, all of these are going to have this structure or struct uh, type situation here. Okay, so we have struct field. Uh, we're going to do, um, and again, that's to help with the structure. They're going. Then we want a string type. Okay, and then we want an integer type. Okay, and if you notice, uh, and then we'll, let's also grab a struct type here but we can also see here so if I just type again we can have timestamp type we have all different types of types that we can utilize and uh, maybe later on in the series we'll actually go through all of these but let's just get through this nice simple example first so uh, that was that was kind of the first the first imports that we need there now the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually create up the schema itself and so we'll call this a data schema, and let's create a list uh, that has the uh, structure field, and we want age. We want then we want age to be an integer type, okay? And then uh, true. And so if you look here, this is this is actually this nullable. We want nullable to be true. Okay, because again, we, we don't want there to be an error if someone just forgets to maybe input their name or if there's just a blank in there. So then let's do uh, a structured field uh, here and we want um, name. And again, we want this to be a string type. Okay, and then we also want it to be our nullable is true. So that is the first piece that we have there. And then the next thing is we want to actually create up the final structure. Okay, and so this is the structure type. Again, we want our fields to equal uh, our data schema. Now I'm doing this, again, you can do this all in one line if you want to, but I like to kind of keep things uh, nice and uh, broken apart so that I can debug my code a lot easier. 
again, particularly if you're, I'm writing this up in, um, in a notebook setting right now, but sometimes, um, and most of the time actually when you're working in um, some other fields and everything, you're going to be utilizing this in just a script itself, and again, having these multiple line breaks in there is going to be able to assist you to debug um, a little bit easier. So let's run that, and then so now let's overwrite our DF, and we'll do uh, spark.read.json, and then we're going to grab, um, I think it was use, user profile is the one that I had was my, I want the user simple.json. So let's do user simple.json. And then now, instead of just doing that, we're actually going to create the schema. And again, we want that final structure to be our schema. And we'll see the difference here when we actually take and we actually print out that schema. Okay, now notice here there's a difference here is that we have our age is set to an integer instead of to a long type. Okay, that's that's the main difference that we have there. But again, you can put these in with timestamps and you can do all other types of uh, very useful and uh, helpful things. So now let's go on and uh, grab the data. Again, we'll still be using this uh, very simple structure. So if we grab the age of our user, Again, notice, let's run this and whoop, something very interesting happened here, right? It comes up and you would expect maybe um, if you're used to pandas or you're used to anything else, you'll be maybe expecting this to be the actual data itself. No, all this is telling us that, that this is a column, okay? So if let's, uh, let's take a second and let's look at the type of what this actually is. So let's do type of data and we do age and we run this, and let's take a look. Oh, and what this actually is, the type of this is a PySpark SQL column column. So it's an actual column uh, reference. So how do we actually go about grabbing the data? Well, there's there are several different ways that we can do this, but I'm going to, in this class, I'm going to stick with a lot of, uh, more of the, some of the SQL syntax, but in a little bit different way. So we can do df dot, and if you guys have used SQL before, what do we type out for grabbing a data set? We use select, okay? So we select and then we want age, okay? And we run this and now let's take a look and see. Oh, now we're getting something just a little bit different, right? So we are grabbing a data frame and we're grabbing age and we see of its type that it is an integer. So again, if we, if we grab in here, let me, copy this up and we grab the code and we grab we want to see the type of this when we run this we see that again that this is now a spark data frame great now if you remember at the very beginning I said that uh, PySpark does a little bit of lazy evaluation it's not going to do anything at all until you tell it to show the data so here if we do data frame dot select we want our variable dot show then and only then are we going to be able to grab our actual data and take a look. Okay, now we can also tell it, um, for example, if you want to grab the head of two objects, we can. Uh, we can also grab in, um, so let's actually let's go on and do that, just, just so that you guys can see this. So if we do df.head, and let's say we just want two, because again, remember our, our uh, data frame is actually very, very small, only has three. Anyway, so if we look at the head here, Notice, this tells us that this is a row. We have age, none, okay, because it's empty, name, Bob, row, again, this is age, 40, name, Jim. So if we do this dot show, notice, this is actually going to give us an error, okay, because it does not actually have any type of, uh, any type of method here for show. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys that just in case you uh, have a bit of a, a fear about that. Okay, so, um, Again, this is actually grabbing grabbing the information that we want. But again, I just want you guys to be able to see what happens if you're, again, if you have that type of error in syntax, don't freak out, okay? Just go back and remember that you're using uh, PySpark. Okay, Spark is the key word in there. And you're not using pandas. Again, people have a tendency to always kind of revert back to what they know and what they feel comfortable with. So just don't, just don't freak out. Always look, see what's going on, and then maybe just go back one step. 
Uh, we can also grab, um, again, some of you are saying, how do we grab multiple uh, columns? How do we grab multiple columns? Well, so df.select, and then we give it a list. Okay, so we want, um, let's grab it, and I want actually name and age. Again, those are the only two uh, columns that we have here. And again, if I run this, just like this, it gives us this data frame name string age integer. Okay, it does not give us uh, the actual data because in this instance, we are going to have to actually actually tell it to show us our information. Okay, so notice there, now it actually gives us everything. And because I switched around um, the, the name and the age, it'll, this will actually help dictate the order that you want to see things in. So how would we go about creating, let's say, a new column, for example, based on uh, some of our, our current data. Okay, so again, we're always needing to create new columns. And um, one thing that we can do is basically, a new column is basically, it's kind of like copying the data itself. So df.with column, okay, and we'll call this, um, what what do we want to actually change uh, again we only have one column and it's a numerical column so let's maybe do some math with the age so how old is our people going to be in um, 10 years okay uh, so uh, let's just call it a new age and I don't let me keep using the whoops that's not going to do anything it's going to give me an error uh, so we want new age uh, and let's say we're going to have our uh, data frame and first let's maybe just copy the column instead of actually doing anything else age uh, dot show oops and this actually needs to be dot show here so what we're going to do is we're technically just going to be grabbing the data and here this is this is another way to actually uh, grab the data when we're inside utilizing the columns so we can run this and you can see here that it just copied over our our new new age it's actually just the same um, and if we notice though but just let's take this just one more step further okay if we do uh, DF dot show on our data look what happened though right now we ran this piece of code to create a new variable but it did not stick okay it did not stick to the data because we didn't tell it to actually um, actually do anything to the data frame so we can also um, again if you notice here that was actually uh, uh, just adding a column but maybe we want to also go in and let's say just rename a column and you may have caught it whenever I was typing stuff out um, at the beginning so if we do df dot with column rename uh, we can go and do something like uh, let's do a name and change it to um, uh, let's say first name okay and then dot show. So here now we see that name has become first name. And again, these are again nothing. Nothing has actually changed inside of the data set itself. So if we do a df dot show, okay, nothing is permanent. And we will and I'll show you guys how to make that permanent just in a little bit. Uh, but I want to go over some maybe a little bit more complicated. Um, more complicated operations first okay so let's say that we want to do something like DF with a column and again one of the one of the saving graces about this okay is that because you're running all of these you may be saying well why can't I change the data frame well the thing is that you may not have write permissions to your uh, to your uh, SQL database which is often a good thing okay you don't want to be mucking about with the data um, that you have access to so always make sure and make a copy always make sure that you're not Messing with data that you're not supposed to okay uh, save yourself a lot of headache. So let's go about 
uh, creating a new column and we want to do some arithmetic okay so let's do uh, uh, let's say age plus 10 okay and so DF we're going to grab age and then we're going to say plus 10 dot show okay and so now we actually see here that we created a new variable age plus 10 and this allows us to um, again just do basic arithmetic again if we wanted to multiply it we could we can do a lot more more complicated things um, as well um, and so let's maybe do uh, one more and talk about one yeah just one more example like this so let's say uh, df dot with uh, column uh, age minus uh, let's just give it five again I'm just changing up uh, the naming uh, uh, style a little bit just so that you guys can see that you can whatever use whatever type of uh, naming convention you like um, so let's do DF age uh, minus five dot show and so here again you see that it, uh, it did it and again you can change up the naming convention however you like um, let's go on now to actually using uh, SQL itself um, so we have uh, let, let's actually create a temporary view of the data okay because um, again SQL uh, queries can actually be directly linked to our data frame and um, but we need to probably register up a temporary view of that data so let's do uh, DF dot create or replace and again here we see that there's a couple different options here and we want this temp view okay and let's call this um, before we used users let's call it customers okay and we run that now we can actually do SQL and let's create a, a results all right and so we can now do a spark dot SQL and then now we can actually use proper uh, SQL syntax so let's do select all uh, from uh, customers and we run this and if we look at this we need to again so if we just do SQL results and we run this we see that we actually get this uh, data frame integer we don't actually get the results but we can use a SQL results dot show and run this and now we see the whole uh, data set and everything else so let's also say something like let's do one more um, a complex one and let's do uh we'll just run it directly so spark sql and we want uh select all from uh customers where um age is equal to and you know what i don't remember anyone's age oh it's right here uh let's say that they are 24 okay and again remember dot show show whoops what did I do wrong hmm spark sequel select star from and is that right Oh, whoops. See, notice I misspelled customers here and then I tried to fix it and that does not work. Okay, so notice right here, whenever I created this, it was customers, no O in there. So I need to go back here and actually just reuse that again. <sighs> Got to remind you guys, this is a data science type course, this is not a spelling or English course. Uh, so I hope you guys will forgive me on that. So here we actually see that uh, we have our, uh, well, our data actually came out showing us that it's Mary um, now I'm probably not going to focus on using this type of SQL syntax here uh, in general for the course I'm going to probably focus on utilizing more of this PySpark type uh, selection tool uh, let me see here select 
Okay, I just want you guys to know that it's there. Again, if you guys are more adept at using uh, SQL, then you guys can feel free to utilize that and follow along throughout the, the rest of the course. Um, I think I'm actually running out of time right now. So I'm going to leave this here, and we will work on... What are we going to work on next? So I can give you guys a bit of a preview. I believe we're going to start working on uh, data frame operations in the next... Um, in the next section. So let me just write that up here for my notes for myself. Uh, work on uh, data, data frame operations. And we will um, be covering that in the next video. So if you guys like this and you enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe and click a like. It really helps us out. Um, and I will see you guys next time. All right, bye-bye.